Hello again. This is our second tutorial for for this series of exercises we're doing. Um, and in this one, we're going to be uh, working with uh, the text tool and working with lighting and kerning. So first of all, this is where we left off our last tutorial. And so I don't need our template showing up anymore, so I'm just going to turn it off. Okay. And I'm going to make a, actually a new layer here. Okay. And we'll zoom in. I'm going to work on this new layer. And you can name them if you want to, but I'm just going to leave mine uh, like that for the moment. And we're going to get our text tool. Okay. This is our type tool here. And I'm just going to click. Now, some teachers talk about clicking and dragging, and you can make a text box. But I'm just going to click, and I'm going to type in, and I'm holding down my shift key while I'm doing it so I get all caps. Or we can put our caps lock on. Bart Simpson. Okay. And so what I want to do is I want to show you about working with tracking, kerning, alignment, uh, letting. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the second word here, Simpson, and we're going to hit return like that. And then let's come over here. Now, mind you, I am using, first of all, I am using Gil Sands. Now, you could use another font for this, for this exercise. Um, you can use a serif font or a sans serif font. Uh, this uh, Gil Sands is a sans serif font since it doesn't have any little feet or little things that come outside the letters. Okay, um, but you don't want to be using a script font. You don't want to be using a handwritten font. You want to use either a serif, traditional serif font, or traditional sans serif font. Okay. Um, I I have this set up for twenty eight. We can go up higher. You know, um, so I'm going to make this a little larger so it's a little easier to see. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is this. I am going to, first of all, um, let's go to our paragraph palette. Now, I have my text tool up already. And the way I get that up, by the way, is by doing Command T. So that brings up our character palette. And usually, typically, up underneath it is their paragraph palette. And so let's do this. Let's, let's set this so our alignment is centered. Okay. So make it a little easier here. I'm going to pull this over here for a moment. And one of the first things I'm going to do with this text is I'm going to adjust the letting. Okay. So let's go to our character palette again. And the letting is the distance between each line. Okay. And, you know, if we're going to create a logo that's using type for someone's name, we would not want to have this much distance between those names, okay? Unless, of course, the letters were bigger. But see, the, the distance here is about the height of that letter. So I'm going to go in here, and this is our letting right here, okay? And we can set the letting so it's lower. And we're going to tighten this up a bit, okay? Now, we don't want to go too tight. Like that's too tight. Now, that might be a neat effect for, for depending on what you're looking for later on. When you're playing around with type, but let's let's loosen that up just a little bit more, and we're going to bring those layers together, something like that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, and if you looked at our assignment sheet, is we're going to play around with our tracking and our kerning. And tracking, if I if I click over the name Simpson here, uh, tracking has to deal with the distance between the letters on the line. And so if we want to increase the distance or decrease it, you know, uh, this is the place to do it. I'm going to go up to maybe 25 or maybe 50, okay? And see, it, it increases them. It gives it a little bit more breathing room between those letters, okay? And it does it equally. Now, the other thing to deal with is what's called kerning, okay? So it took me a long time to figure it out. I had to look it up because I... I don't have any formal training in typography, but I've heard these two terms, tracking and kerning. And, and I thought, well, what, they both deal with spacing. Well, tracking deals with the spacing of all the letters at once, and kerning deals with individual letters. So what we want to look at is we want to look at the individual letters, the space between those letters, and see, do they look equal? Because sometimes they may not. And one thing I'm seeing here is the S and the I just for some reason, seem a little bit more spaced out. Maybe it's not that much, but let's click in between there, okay? And I'm going to hold down my Alt key, and I'm going to use my arrows on my keyboard 
and I'm going to go towards the left so it brings it in just a little bit. And that's all I need to do, you know. Now, I can adjust the individual kerning. And so kerning deals with either tightening or loosening up the, the, the letters, okay. And that's, and that's so key here. Um, especially when you get when you type something or you're given any text, the first thing you need to look at is what does that kerning look like? You know, because we want to go in there and take a look and make sure it looks decent because every letter is shaped a little differently and they could be evenly spaced, but because of the shape of the letter, it may seem like there's a greater amount of space between those letters. Okay, so let's go up to Bart here. We'll select Bart. Okay. And we will open up the tracking on it, okay? And we might have to manually do that. I'm going to go up to 200, okay? Well, we can keep going up like this. And I'm just going to hold this down here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work with alignment on this. It's very simple. This is a very simple exercise. But this is something that a lot of students, I don't see them doing enough of. And that is adjusting things and looking for alignment. So what I'm trying to do is I want this B. I'm going to keep making it larger here, make, increasing that a little bit more. I want that B to be lined up with this S. Now, one of the problems I'm having here is I actually have a space in between that. Okay. Oops. Let's see. Maybe I don't. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I had a space in between that. I'm going to, and I'm just going to hit delete here. Okay. So let's go over here again. And space this out more and just kind of keep going here until this is equal. And what we're looking for is we want to see, we want to make sure that the that the end of that B here lines up with the end of that S. And I'm just doing it visually to see what it looks like. And I just keep kind of keep clicking here. Okay. So first we, we're trying to get that. That's the first thing we're trying to do. And that looks pretty close. Now, if we want to, let's click off of it for just a second. All right? And let's uh, hit Command-R or Control-R, depending if you're working on a PC. And this will bring up our rulers. And we can always go to our side ruler and bring over a guide to see. Okay? All right? So you see, if I wanted this B to line up again, I'm going to probably have to bring it over. Now, what, now I'm not going to do deal with the tracking anymore. I'm actually just going to click at the end of the B, and I'm going to just adjust the kerning, believe it or not. I know there's no distance between those, but I'm just going to click there, and I'm going to hold down my Alt key, and I'm going to take my left arrow on my, on my keyboard and just do that. And see, I pull that straight on over. Now, we're going to do the same thing here. Let's get our guide, pull one over, and we're going to line up... Oh, Look at that. That looks good. Now, what we need to do is we just need to take a look, and we'll zoom out just a little bit to see what the distance between all the letters and BART look like, okay? So let's zoom out just a little bit and see if anything needs to be adjusted, okay? And for some reason, I don't know, it's, you know, it looks like maybe, you know, the distance between the B and the A seem greater. So that's why we can individually adjust things. And so this is the job of a graphic designer, you know, is individually tightening things up a little bit. And in so doing, you know, we might have to go over here and adjust this. But th this really is the role of what graphic designers do. And illustration students really hate graphic design most of the time. But, but you've got to get used to this, you know, because this is so important to manipulate your text so it looks good, all right? So I'm looking at it again, all right? So I see the T's a little off there, so so maybe what I might do is just, I'm, I'm taking a look. Actually, you know what? I think the A and the R, I'm just being picky here. There we go. And then you know, many graphic designers are super picky when it comes to text. So anyway, this is what we're doing for our second exercise. A very simple exercise there, okay? And what we want to do is at the end here is... I think it's always good if you're dealing with small amounts of text, especially in Adobe Illustrator, is to turn your text to outline. Because if you're sending me your file, I may not have the font you have. So what I'm going to simply do is, I am actually going to just make a copy of layer three here, okay? Now if we want, yeah, we'll just make a copy like this, okay? That's one way to make a copy. Another way is to come over here and click on this and duplicate layer three, okay? 
We'll turn off three. We'll take the copy. We'll select the text, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this text to outline, okay? So let's go to type and create outlines. In creating outlines, what it will do is, let's do command Y, is it turns it into a vector path, okay? And when we're dealing with logos, when we're dealing with small amounts of text, it's okay to turn things to outlines. I've heard some of my students say, their teachers said, oh, never turn your text to outline. Well, yeah, that's true if you're working on like a, a whole page of text. You don't want to deal with, with turning you know, paragraphs into outlines. But for just a small amount, like a title or a logo, it's essential, okay? Because, and I'm going to go back to, to uh, let's do Command Y again. There we go. I hit Command T by accident. Uh, but anyway, what this will do is this will ensure when you send your file to me that I see what you want me to see. I see whatever font you have chosen. And if I don't have it on my computer, I can at least see what you've created, okay? And so this will end our second exercise.